Adam Laxalt wants to be Nevada's next governor, and we're talking with him right here on Nevada Politics Today. I'm your host, Victor Jakes. Laxalt currently serves as Nevada's Attorney General, and before that, he was a lawyer in the Navy. Adam, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Well, education is the big issue in the campaign. Let's go to clip one and see what your wife has to say about your education plan. Adam's plan will give education an extra $500 million. He'll make sure those funds get to the classroom and give parents extra control over their educational choices for all our kids. You know, $500 million is a lot of money. How are you going to spend that? Well, look, we're we've obviously are in a good place as a state where our economy continues to grow, and we had a surplus going into 2017, and and we certainly anticipate a similar or higher surplus going into 2019. Uh, we also have marijuana tax, which has come I mean, in uh, above but how, projections. How are you, where are you going to put the money? Are you just going to give it to the school districts? Or are you going to put it into s specific programs? School yeah, choice? no, no, I was getting there. Okay. I was just saying where we're going to get the money from, but. Um, you know, w as long as the state is growing and as long as we have more revenues, you know, we have to figure out how we're going to prioritize that spending. And, you know, I hear loud and clear, you know, the number one priority for all Nevadans and myself is education. We have to turn the corner and uh, being at the bottom is simply not acceptable. I do think some of the reforms over the last few years have started to help us down that path. So I'm committed to, to those reforms and keeping them. But we really need to take the next step. And we cannot be a state where education lags, especially when we have this economy that's growing and we have all these new good paying jobs. And now, unfortunately, we have employers that are saying that we don't have the workforce here to fill those good jobs. So one area that I'm really focused on is trying to do a lot more with charter expansion as well as career and technical schools, trade and vocational training. We have a great opportunity in this state to expand those and make sure that, you know, we've got waiting lists in every one of these places. We need to meet those needs. At the other side of those particular types of schools are really great jobs, jobs that can be transformative for those families. And, uh, you know, I've seen some pretty cool things where at one of the career and technicals here in Las Vegas, you know, they're teaching certain skills that is are allowing Las Vegas kids to go to Elko, Nevada, to go into the mining industry. These are, again, really high paying jobs and, and something that would be great for our kids. So we need to make sure that we're committed to matching our education system, the economy. Uh, I, I believe in an all of the above approach. We can't keep doing it the way we've been doing it. And, and isn't, you know, keep doing it the way we've been doing it, spending more money? You know, in the last 60 years, we've nearly tripled inflation adjusted per pupil spending with very little increase in student achievement. H how does throwing more money at the system help that? Well, know that we're not just going to throw money in and just, just hope it works out. We need to make sure we're targeting the spending. We need to make sure it's going in the priorities like I was talking about whether it's CTEs, charter school expansion. I want to make sure we up opportunity scholarships, which was added in 17, uh, but we can do a lot more with that, and that's something that actually doesn't cost the state money, but give, gives kids a lot of more opportunity. So one of the key, I, th I hope, reforms to deal with the issue you're concerned about, and it's not just you, it's a lot of Nevada citizens, is accountability. And that's why we propose the education checkbook. And I want to take that into the governor's office, and I want us to create a website of transparency, one that's easily digestible so that everyday citizens can understand when new money goes into the schools, is it going into the classrooms, is it going to teachers and the kids, or is it going into bureaucracy, or going into mismanagement. You know, and it's, and it's, I, hope that, I hope that program can help us as, as a citizenry, as well as the governor, who's going to be in charge of trying to build a budget and target this spending, we want to make sure that spending is going to areas that we think is going to help. You know, I think one of the challenges with that is everyone says, oh, we need to pay teachers more. But then the money goes to the school district and it gets distributed according to collective bargaining. And so instead of, you know, doing things like paying good teachers more, you just give basically an across-the-board raise. Are, are there collective bargaining reforms that need to go along with, with the education funding? You know, for me, as the Attorney General, uh, I've, I've had a record of being able to take on big issues and bring people together, whether it's going after the rape kit backlog, 
creating the first ever military legal assistance program. That's bringing everyone to the table, riding herd on an issue, not taking no for an answer, working towards a solution that can move these things forward. And so obviously the Attorney General, I've never been in charge of education anyway, but you know, I pledge this will be my priority. This is what I will wake up every day and live and breathe why we are not moving forward. And we will get people to the table who ask hard questions. Do you what, think unions are part of the reason we're not moving forward? You know, we need to make sure that I don't want to come into an administration where I'm creating some antagonistic situation. I want to work with all sides of our education system so that we can come up with a solution. Uh, maybe that's part of, part of the issue. I hope to be able to discuss all those issues so that we can once and for all move the education system forward. And uh, like I said, just the power to convene as a governor and to be able to demand answers, demand accountability, make sure that the superintendent you know, has the authority from me to not take no for an answer, for example, the breakup of the Clark County School District. You know, we're still waiting on that. We know that's a tremendous reform that could fix our system. It's things like that of just driving and driving to make sure that we reform our system. And you've talked about education savings accounts in the last session. Governor Sandoval proposed $60 million that didn't end up going through. How much are you going to propose uh, f in funding for education savings accounts? Um, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in education savings account. As you probably know, uh, that was, when that was passed, it was landmark for the country. Nevada was the first one to have universal ESA, something that would be transformative for our kids and something that gives parents the ability to choose the way that they're going to be able to best educate their kids, whether that's homeschooling or college credits. Uh, the, the, the ability for parents to be able to understand their educational needs for their kids is really significant. So now we get to debate funding and how much money we get to put into it. I hope to convince the other side this is great for kids uh, across our state. This is great for kids in the lower economic stratosphere that they get a chance to be able to uh, have opportunities that maybe they don't in a failing school. So, you know, we're going to work to get that number as high as we can get it. So you're, you're going to send a budget over. Are you, are you going to send over a budget with at least $60 million for ESAs? You know, that's something that obviously if I'm elected, I have to go to work on what building a budget would look like. Um, the, the current governor's already said he's writing the budget. So uh, I'm, I'm not committing any particular numbers because you know, I don't know what we face. I don't have the economic forecast yet in front of me, and I don't know exactly what it looks like. So it'd be irresponsible for me to commit specifically, but it will be a priority. Uh, is that the number? I, I can't give you exactly, but, but I certainly plan on trying to fund ESAs. You know, and there's, there's been talk about, you know, previously you've opposed the commerce tax, which nets about $200 million for the state. Uh, when you propose your budget, will it include the commerce tax, or will you try and repeal the commerce tax? You know, uh, it's no. It, it's obviously been. I've been very clear on the commerce tax that that I oppose it. Um, it's it's also very clear now that we're going to have two Democrat houses, very likely, uh, and and I don't think there's going to be any way to repeal the commerce tax. Uh, it's something we can negotiate and talk about, but um, you know, it's something we're going to have to look at when we get into the session. You know, I want to talk about debates. You had accepted a, a debate about a month ago, hosted by the RJ the Las Vegas NBC affiliate. Steve Sisolak just very recently said he wasn't going to do that debate. He would do a debate with Channel 8. Are, are you going to debate Steve Sisolak? We've been waiting to debate Steve Sisolak. We accepted a debate that was going to be the statewide TV. It was going to include the largest paper in the state. It was going to include Telemundo. And it was really going to be a great forum for Nevadans to be able to see the two of us and how we differ on policy. And we've been trying to hammer out the details, waiting on their side to firm things up for weeks and weeks and weeks. And boof, you know, last week they said they're not doing the debate. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's going to be very hard to trust their camp that they're going to be able to actually you know, actually come with a plan and, and commit to a debate. And I want to end with, with Ryan Bundy. He's an independent candidate for governor, uh, famous from the, the Bundy standoff. You know, he said recently, hinted that he would drop out of the race and endorse you if he met with you and he liked what you had to say. Are you planning to meet with him to try and get him to support you? You know, he's never reached out to me. So, uh, you know, I read that in the paper just like you do. Uh, we are 20 days out, 28 days out from an election. We're working every single day to earn every Nevadan's vote, and that's my priority. That's that's going to be remain our priority till till the end of the election. If he reached out to you, would you meet with him? 
I, you know, we'd have to look at that if it happened. All right, we're going to leave it there. Adam, thanks so much for, for coming on. All right, thank you very much. And thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with part two of our exclusive interview with Republican gubernatorial nominee Adam Laxalt. Remember, if it involves Nevada politics, we're talking about it right here on Nevada Politics Today. I'll see you next week.